original one in the front. Okay, as you can see, by to get the back one, just delete that. Load the load the back image that we did in. And here, uh, back. There we go. All right. So we have the back image, but we're still looking at the front of the car. And as you'll notice, Blender does not provide you with a back. Ouch. Well, what do we do? Give up. We're finished. No. Uh, basically, if you're working on a uh, desktop computer, you're going to enable your number pad by hitting the number pad key and then hit control one on the number pad. Now I'm using a notebook computer to do this. Let me go ahead and wireframe this. Okay, well, not on this one, I'll go back. Solid. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit function and then on my Hewlett Packard model laptop it's the scroll key and then my lights on. So now the number pad is enabled. I'm going to hit control and on this computer it's the J which is corresponds to the number pad one. Oops, hold on. It's in the wrong window. <laughs> okay. There we go. Alright. And what this has done is just reverse the front view to the back. Control number pad one. If you're working on a desktop, just hit the number lock key and hit control and one on your number pad. Or if you're working on a desktop, hit your function key or your whatever key enables the alternate key designations. You should be able to find it pretty easily with your computer documentation or your help. Now as you can see, our as we've switched this, the background image is not where we want it to be. It is the back of the car. So I'm going to simply just move it back over and line it up. any more adjusting. Okay, we went a little too far. Okay, that's just about where we need to be. Close to it. As you can see, we're looking at the back. Now, I'm going to go get rid of this because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to select all these. By holding down the shift key and right clicking. Now, what I need to do here is we need to drop these down, so I'm going to enable GZ, okay, actually, there's a better way, okay, uh, first, I'm going to enable the wireframe mode so I can see through it, now, this will be sort of a two-part thing. I'm going to adjust it from these different viewpoints. And it'll have to be multiple adjustment because
collect all these. And just drop them down. enough. Now if I come in here and take a look at this okay, I'm just going to move these over So I'm going to move these in. All of these. As we can see over here, we need to adjust this. So, working out of two different dimensions here. Ah, there was my problem. I knew there was something up here that wasn't meeting up. Okay. Alright, now with these, we're just going to bring them down to where they match up. Looking pretty decent. Okay, we have some adjustments here. But uh, for all practical purposes, looks pretty good. Alright, now now what we're going to do. save a whole lot of time. Oftentimes the direction you're working will dictate how quickly something can be done. For example, we already have the slope here if we were to extrude off of this point, it would extrude it in a straight line. And we would have to go back and adjust each one of these uh, vertices lines, or lines of vertices. And it would take a whole lot of time. So if we just basically go with the slope, always go with the slope. That's what we did here and on all the other parts of the car that we modeled, like the hood. So we have an automatic slope. extruded over the exact same number of spaces that I have polygons over here for a reason because we're going to join these. Okay. So we can see. Now I'm going to go to let's see.
bit, but that's okay. Okay, now let's enable, and of course, a little bit of that there. That's okay, we can fix it with just a couple of clicks of a cursor. No problem. Overlap a little bit. And voila, there we go. Okay, let's take a look at it. Starting to look like we sort of want to. All right. Yeah, I mean, there's it's rough, but this is where we start to get into the really detailed stuff. At this point in our efforts, the majority of the car construction is complete as far as the outer body goes. There are, of course, there's the front and rear bumper and uh, windows. We're going to have to cut some holes for those. But right now, uh, beginning in tutorial 9, we're going to begin to uh, really start putting the mold on these things. We're going to shape this car. We're going to get it looking like it should so that when we go and put our first coat of paint on it, it'll look like it will in the real world. So bear with me. We've roughed it out, and now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty. Thanks for watching my tutorial, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, more to come, and I'll see you in the next installment. Please leave your comments and uh, email me any personal questions you have or things that maybe you see in the videos that perhaps could be done a little more efficient or maybe you have some experience in that I'm not touching on. Please let me know. Uh, I really enjoy doing these things, and I'm glad they've helped so many people. And thanks for your feedback. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.